I was so naive and arrogant, you know. I thought I'd be like the messiah of like techno, like, and just wasn't. People were offering me money to do this, and I was just like, well, let's just see what happens. You know, it never meant to be a business. I had you know, releases and things, but when I realised there was a machine which I could buy, I looked at it and I was just like, I've got to get me one of those. And then it became my obsession and my focus. To the detriment of every other aspect of my life. a little bit to get it up a bit. Well, right, Chris, and we're going to do his cut now. Every now and then peeking in there. Going to shops like Rywax or Yam Records, I'd be like, oh, it was cut up late. You've got a lay? Yeah, yeah, I cut it myself. And you wrote this? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wicked, let's put it on the speakers. Like, oh, man, that's sick, you know. And then they'd be like, Oh yeah, we write music. Can you cut our stuff? Like, yeah, right. How much? I don't know. I'll think of a price. And, yeah, yeah. Because it's such a weird niche n n thing to have a shop where you can go and cut records. I was right, they hadn't really grasped it. I said it'd be a bit like a hairdresser's where people book appointments, but instead of getting a haircut, they get a dub plate cut. You know, it's, it's a way of keeping music and, and storing it and having it in a very physical format. And I was just like, that's all I want to do with my life.